Happy Sabbath, happy Sabbath, happy day. Now this is a rare Sabbath. For those who are watching us from home, you're welcome and may God bless you. Uh, this is a rare Sabbath. Today is International Workers' Day, International Labor's Day. You know very well it's being celebrated worldwide. So I don't know if we've had a Sabbath before that coincided with our International Day, but today is one, a unique one. While Labor Day, there's also a Sabbath. So, for those who are working, we thank God you've come today to rest. As you celebrate the International Workers' Day, know that you are the, uh, the feet of Jesus, and may you have enough rest to go and work the next coming week. May God bless you abundantly. Now, as we worship together today, we are beginning our Sabbath. Let's talk about Jesus. Let's talk about God and what he has done to us throughout the week. 
and we're hoping everybody has worked. May God, uh, we're hoping that everybody, God has seen him or her through. And whatever that we've gone through, may God be given glory and honor. We want to discuss something small this Sabbath. And the topic of the day, I want us to discuss it, who are we in the crowd. We are beginning our Sabbath with a topic called, who are we in the crowd. Now, this morning, I was trying to read the, 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 the Bible and understand some events in the Bible where many people were involved. And yesterday, I also went through when Jesus was being crucified. When you read Mark chapter 15, verse 12, the story of Jesus being crucified. And the Bible is very clear. Some things are very funny and some things are very serious in the Bible. Uh, those who wrote the Bible under guidance from the Holy Spirit who are making it easy for us to understand and also easy for us to get the message. And through the message, we are able to know who God is. But again, the Bible describes a, a situation whereby you, you are unable to understand how people interacted and how people knew God. And in the Bible, we are told about when Jesus was being crucified. We want to read about uh, this story of Jesus being crucified and some few events. In Mark chapter, we are saying Mark chapter 15 verse 12. The Bible says this. Mark chapter 15 verse 12. Now, we'll start from, I think, from 10. From 10. Now, but the chief priest moved the people that he should rather release Barnabas unto them. And Pilate answered and said again unto them. Now, you see the Bible says, said again unto them. This is not the first time the, chief, the, the, the Pilate is saying, he's talking to these people. He's requesting them and saying, you see, my, my, he was moved and so that he can release Barnabas. But now he, he, he's, he's speaking and, and trying to ask the, the, the audience, the crowd that was gathered there, is asking them, what will you do that I should do unto him that he call himself the king? Pilato wakajibu tena kawambia, basi, ni mtendeje huyu mnae anaye nena kuwa ni mfalme wa wayahudi. Pilate is asking the crowd, what should I do to this person? Who is insisting and calling himself Mwana wa Yahudi? Ama mtoto wa mfalme. Now, this is a question to the crowd. Again, you see, the Bible is saying, Pilate is asking again. This is not the first time Pilate is asking. Umati huu ulikusanyika. The crowd gathered. They were following Christ, yes. But now, most of them did not know whom Christ was. Most of them were part of the crowd because they were not aware of the, of the situation or the happenings of the day. You see, we are gathered here, or we are here today, or we are fellowshipping the Sabbath, most of us without knowing why we are in the Sabbath. I am one of them. Why are we in this Sabbath? And who are we in the crowd? When this question is being asked, when this question is being tabled to us, what do we respond? How will be our response? The Bible says, and they shouted back and they said, crucify him. Why ask Pilate, what evil has he done? Now, this person or this individual, Pilate knows very well that he has done nothing. But he's, he's requesting the crowd, he's putting a question to the crowd, he's proposing a question to the crowd, what should I do to this man who is calling himself a king? And the crowd says back, crucify him. First John. First John chapter 3. Verse 1 to 3. And before we go there, we read Matthew chapter 16, verse 13. Matthew chapter 16, verse 13. Matthew chapter 16, verse 13. The Bible says, When Jesus came unto the coast of Caesarea, Philip, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I am? Now, again, again, this is a question to us. Jesus is asking the crowd and also more so specific his disciples. He's asking them, who do people say I am? What one asema mimi ni nani? The Bible says in verse 14 it says when you go to verse 13 let's see how they're responding. You see there's a question in our lives. Jesus is asking, who are we? At what has this man done? 
what has this man done that I should crucify him? There's a question to us in our life today. And we know how people will respond when such, when such questions uh, pop into their lives. But you see, some will say whom they, uh, some will start describing who this man is. They say this in verse, in verse 14. Some say, thou art John the Baptist, and some Elias, and others Jeremiah's. Now, when we, when we have a question in our life, when you know who, we don't know whom Christ is, and when we face this question, we will start describing Jesus, who he is. Some of us will say, he is John the Baptist. And others will say, he is Elias. And others will say, he is Jeremiah. Maybe some of us will say, he is the president. And others will say, he is our chief physician. Remember, this is a question being propelled to the people. The first question was before, Pilate was asking, what should I do to this man? And they said, crucify him. Another question is to the disciples, people who walked closely with Jesus. These are confidants of Jesus, people who knew Jesus, people who knew the story of heaven, people who knew what Jesus has done. And Jesus is asking them, what do people say I am? Now the crowd, now they are responding how the crowd perceives Jesus to be. They are saying the crowd says, you are Elias. The crowd says, you are Jeremiah. The Bible is very clear. When you walk with Jesus, when you are closer to Jesus, but you don't know whom he is, you will be part of the crowd. You will answer his Jeremiah. You will answer his John the Baptist. You will answer he is a chief physician. You will say he is our president. You will say he is the kingdom. You will say he is the banker. You will say he is my education. You will say he is my PhD. You will say he is my, you will say he is my business. Because you don't know whom Jesus is. This is a question to ask this morning. Who does the crowd say? Whom do you think Jesus is? Whom do I think Jesus is? Are you part of the crowd? Are we saying that crucify him without knowing who he is? Who are you in the crowd this morning? Or who do you say Jesus is? Daniel, well, let's read Daniel chapter 3, verse 22. Daniel chapter 3, verse 22. The Bible says, let's start from verse 21. Now, some Hebrew men, some three young men who were held captive, at the time of Babylon. And these young men were put into a, te to a test to know who their God is. And because at that time, the biggest, the biggest mistake or the biggest crime you can commit at that time was worshipping the true God. They were bound to suffer because they were worshipping this true God. And because of this incident, when they went worshipping their true God, some other people were there witnessing and they were ill motivated. They were seeking to see it, to find these guys worshipping their true God and they are only they, are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are, they were like witnesses. They were, they, are, they, they were gathering information and they were they, they were seeking to know when will these guys fall down to worship this true God so that we can get a reason and find a reason to crucify them. When these people they, 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 when we find these people who are, who are advisors of the, of the king then in the Nebuchadnezzar, when they found uh, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and Daniel worshipping their true God then this was the right time because they were they were seeking to find them in this mistake and when they found them they, they got them, they went to the king and they advised the king, you know these guys are doing contrary to what you said, instead of them worshipping your idol, your great, uh, your great idol that you put upon the kingdom they are worshipping some other god and we don't know why. And they advised the, uh, the king, you know, you should put them into, let it be an example to others who are worshipping this kind of gods so they can know what to do next. And by doing so, people will learn that you are, are our king and you are, in, you are in control. They bound Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore, because the king's commandments was urgent, you see when you read verse 21, these men were bound in their coats, their horses, and their hats, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning furnace. That's because they worship God and somebody was ill motive. Somebody had an ill motive of trying to get them in the mistake, trying to get them in the act of worshipping this their God so that they can crucify them. They bound them, they took them to the king and the king also gave a decree because they have gone against me, they should be bound and put into the fire. You know, this week has been tough for those who have been watching news. For those who have been going through international news and media, you know what is going on in India. For the first time. You know, I was 
Nilikuwa nasikia mambo ya krimeji. Krimeji siku anajua. I was born in some city Kisumu and I know how Indians perform their rituals of send aways. And I did not know it's this this it's this serious. I saw in India a street being converted, a whole stadium being converted into a crimage where bodies are burned. Are burned at the highest speed, at the highest furnace, because more bodies are coming. So you burn them at the highest speed so that you can put away with them. You can get away with these bodies and get more bodies to burn more until they run out of charcoal. India is requesting for charcoal. Paka wanataka permit, uweze ukata kuni nyingi, ili uweze kuchoma mili nyingi kwa sababu ya vifo, vinawe yotokana kana COVID-19. It was horrifying. Ilikuwa inatisha. But this is the reality. When we are, when we are bound to suffer because of sin, and the calamities be, uh, befall us because of sin, we are bound to see these problems. That's what the Bible is saying. When you see all this, prepare. This is the second. This is the end time. It's almost coming. It's almost coming. But now when he's coming, whom do you think he is? What should I do to this man? These are our questions. So I don't know if you are alone. I don't know if you are alone. Yeye ni nani katika maisha yako? Yesu anauliza, "Mimi ni nani katika maisha ya Jared?" Yesu anauliza, "Je, dunia inauliza, nimfanyie nini huyu ambaye amesimama hapa? Sisi ni kati ya wale ambao tuko katika crowd. Are we shouting the loudest? Are we saying we should crucify him because we don't know him or we are saying we should crucify him because we think he's, he's a sinner? Because we think he is falsely claiming to be God. Whom do you think Jesus is? Whom do you think Jesus is in your life? Wewe unamjua yeye unamfahamu vipi huyu Yesu wako? Unamfahamu vipi Yesu wako? Are we among those who are shouting the loudest? Those who have been paid to say crucify him. Are we practicing mob justice to our savior because we don't understand who our savior is or we are or we are like we are like uh, King Nebuchadnezzar. Who our eyes are open. We are few in the crowd, yes. But we are one in the crowd standing tall and we know whom Jesus is. There are people who in the crowd do not mix with the crowd. They are like light and darkness. How ni kama giza na muangaza. Katika umati wengi, how watasimama. They will stand out and they will be seen. The King Nebuchadnezzar answered. Then the king was astonished and rose up and hissed and spake and said unto the counselors. He said to the people, those who are gathered them, did we not cast three men into the fire? They answered, yes, king, we did. He answered and said, no, I see walking amidst the fire and they are four and one of them looks like the son of God. You know, when you are part of the crowd and your eyes are perceiving, uh, they perceive Jesus to be part of the crowd, you will not be able to see who Jesus is. Kama we ni katikati wa umati, na umji Yesu ni nani, utamwona Yesu kama yule jamaa na ajita mungu, na basi kwa shara hiyo, utasema asunubishwe. Lagi kama we ni kama, ni kama nebukarineza, macho yako wamefunguliwa, macho yango wamefunguliwa, utasatabasamu katika umati huu, utatoa katika umati huu, utasimama na useme kweli, huu ni Yesu Kristo, huu ni mwana Adamu, asunubishwe kwa sababu ya dambi zangu. So kwa sababu ye ni anajita mungu, kwa sababu ni ya dambi zangu. May God bless us this morning. May God open our eyes so that we may be like the Nebuchadnezzar. Among the crowds, may we stand up. May we stand tall. May we stand out to be like Nebuchadnezzar. May we see Jesus should die, yes, but he should die because of our sins. Let's crucify Jesus because of our sins. Not because he says to be God. Let's crucify Jesus because he's God and he's our savior and true savior in our life. May God bless us all. May we raise up and pray. Precious Master, uh, this morning and this hour, we are praying and asking for thy forgiveness. We are requesting, may you forgive us our sins and our trespasses. And also help us forgive those who trespassed against us. Wash us with thy son's blood that was shed on Calvary. Prepare us for your second coming. And also to esabi haki rudipanamara apini. Father, we are requesting, may you guide us throughout the day. You've taught us that we are amongst the crowd, yes. But you are requesting us we may stand out from the crowd. May we know why we are crucifying you. May we know the reason why you died on the cross. Not just because you are a normal being or you are just someone else. May we understand you died on the cross because of our sins. May we also open our eyes to see you are a true God in our lives. And our ministers, you will always be God in our lives. God, may you bless us. May you walk with us. Whoever we watch, who is watching today, who is coming to worship with us today. Those who are gathered at home. Those who have their churches. Those who are sick. 
those who are traveling. May you be seen in their lives. May you be felt in their lives. Those who are mourning, we are placing India into the able ones. We are seeing unimaginable things in India. We know people are suffering in India, but we know God is in control. You are the beginning and the end. May you take charge. May your hand be seen. May you be seen among these tribulations. At the end of the day, may they look back and say, you are there and you manifested in their lives. Walk with us throughout this day. Bless our families. Bless all individuals who, are that, who have gathered here. Bless me too. And all our wants and needs, answer them according to their will. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Endelea na wimbo song number 
it's Jesus. Those of us who are watching at home, wherever you are, we welcome you here with us. Any two questions about promise? Before we can divulge this lesson, I want to welcome the panelists who are going to discuss the lesson with us, beginning with Ego. I also want to welcome uh, Nat David. Thank you for this last week's lesson. It was on everlasting lesson four. Uh, we look at God. He says. God, the meaning, because he made that and Abraham. We also did look at this at covenant where initially God uh, gave him a command to move from his homeland go to a known land. Not mission, just carried his luggage, the nephew, he left. The second stage we looked at was but um, now, typically made it covenant. There was a ceremony where God instructed Abraham to um, most of sacrifice so in a covenant that different. Uh, we looked at the third stage of about the condition to sign covenant. Usually, covenants have uh, those three stages have shown our uh, those five covenant that we look at that um, conditions, there must be a ceremony, there must be sacrifices where the blood is involved, covenant is fulfilled, covenant has promises. Basically that is why we see the uh, of lesson saying the promise is a significant part of the covenant relationship. Finally, the circumcision was to be a sign of those who are covenant. This later on we'll see in New Jerusalem, Mama, the new Israel, which is such circumcision turns out to be our heart being cut off worldly pleasures. Obligations were met. Whoever gives a covenant it also requires certain obligations to be met. And this uh, covenant with Abraham, uh, Conditions were that obedience is very important, having faith is also very important, and also doing the will of God. Finally, we saw that Abraham was a man of God, that God, that's why God was using him to save the whole world through him. So, today's lesson, lesson number five. Lesson number five is titled. Children of the promise. The children of promise. Son, let me read you the memory text. Come from the book of Matthew, eight fifty-six. So I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Giving. Is always with us. In spite of anything we face, he will be with us. So the title of that uh, today's lesson: Children of the Promise. Who are they? Who are these children of the promise? This week we had an opportunity to read Galatians. Short book. You have to go and read it. I discovered this is where the children of the promise are clearly stated. Abraham had two children, one was a slave girl, the other the wife, Sarah. So, Sarah 
sense, the, ch the child who was born out of human works, out of human uh, uh, intervention, without God, when he was given a promise of a child, he didn't see how. So, the wife told uh, Abraham, then later on, God said, that is not the child I promised. Isaac born. Isaac being born from Sarah, the free wife, the free woman, who is found in Galatians 4, you will find that children, we are the, the children of God, having come from the lineage of Isaac, from Sarah, that lineage, whereby children of the promise are those who have received Jesus Christ. So without much ado, I will want to give a story that has been given by the Lord of the lesson, where is demonstrating the love of a father and a daughter who had gone for a holiday somewhere to swim. Unfortunately, sometimes the waters are turbulent, a very strong tide came upon them and separated them. The father could not be able to reach out on the daughter and save her. So he gave the daughter one when you see the tides are very strong, try to lie on your back and wait. You are going to be sure to look for help there. Come with the water. The daughter, the instruction of the father, the tides were becoming so strong, they comfortably uh, waited for the to come with help. So this story is being told to us that when the people who the father had gone to bring a light to long, we are not yet sure whether they will find it. Fortunately, I mean, they found this girl. Very calm, very relaxed, lying on the back. And then they wondered, why are you so calm and you are in danger? Daughter, right? But father told me he will come for me. He gave me uh, 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 an instruction that if I do not want to sink, I will lie on the back. This story clearly shows us our father God is with us. He has given us promises in the Bible. He has told us that in this world there will be tribulation. But you have good cheer. Memory text good. That lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So in this week's uh, lesson at Agrance, we are looking at the Lord Himself being a shield to Abraham, that is a protector. We also look at how through him the families of the world are going to be blessed. And what is uh, this greatest covenant promise? So those are the key things we are going to look at in this lesson of this week. And I want to invite our panelists to take us to lesson. So on the Sunday part, I will invite Elder David Maina to tell us why God himself referred himself to Abraham as a shield. And does that have any implications to Christians today? What is a shield? Elda, welcome and take us to that part.
that of the wicked one. So ngao inahitajika katika vita, tuko vitani. Vita tuko nayo na nani? Chatani amewage war. Anachua siku zake zimeisha. Kiangalia matukio ya hivi karibuni, unaona makanisa ya mefungwa, watu wanapitia changamoto nyingi. Hizi ni dalili za kuonyesha ya kwamba kuna vita zinaendelea. Na shield gani? Hao yako, imani. Abraham was a man of God. He believed God to act. Sisi kama dao wa Abraham, ni alifiwa ya kwamba on the program of God, one of the memories of God, faith. Kira imani kwa mungu ama kakosu yale amekakea uwezi wa kakosu ya vita ya kakati. Kiangalia katika upande mwingine, vita ni vikali lakini Genesis 5:15 Mungu akasema ya kwamba I'll put an enmity between the the the, the, the snake the serpent and the man the seed of the woman was the one to bruise the serpent in other words na seed itasariwa pale Abraham akambiwa bado hiyo seed itatoka katika uzao wake hiyo seed itaendelea mpaka tuone its fulfillment in the coming of Jesus Christ Lord and Savior. Elder Sego kindly discussed us through the promise part one whereby we see the seed that was, which is coming out of the make.
Natuambia, this stone that I have set up will be God's house. And the whole I give you a tenth. Now, uh, wapendwa. So, no, so we see God being very serious with salvation. He even repeats the promise. The promise that he gave to Abraham, he repeats to his son, Jacob. Now, let's see. Uh, from then on, what happens? Let's go to our Bibles, the book of Galatians, chapter 3, verse 29. Uh, sorry, let's look at also Genesis 18, 18. Genesis chapter 18, verse 18, inasema hivi. Abraham, now this is God talking to, unakumbuka wale wageni ambao alikuja kutembele Abraham wakati huo. Na mungu anambia, God is like God is talking to himself. He says this, Abraham will surely, in fact if you read verse 17, inasema, then the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? Abraham will surely become a great and powerful nation, and all nations of the earth will be blessed through him. God is even discussing the issue with himself. So he tells us mawazo ya mungu, how serious about mawazo ya mungu towards salvation is. That it's something that even he has to debate with himself. Then let's look at 22 verse 18, what it says. 22 verse 18, in Ayanda Hivi, and through your offspring, all nations of the earth will be blessed. Uh, Wapendwa, that is God now addressing, in fact it's the angel of the Lord who is addressing Abraham. Tunakumbuka hiyo ni wakati Abraham ali aliweza kujaribiwa kwa kutoa mwanake kama kafara na kwa sababu hiyo ilifanyika tunaona ya kwamba God is repeating the promise and is actually addressing Abraham again now let's go to the new testament and see what Paul had to say about this thing Genesis chapter 3 verse 29 goes like this. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Wapendwa Paul alipo andikia hii barua wa Christo, wa kanisa la Galatia. Na kumbuka ya kwamba hayo makanisa yalikuwa na changamoto mingi sana ya kuweza kuelewa jili. Kulikuwa na wayahudi ambayo walikuwa na elewa, ambayo walikuwa na jua hawa, their salvation is guaranteed. Na kulikuwa na gentiles ambayo hokuwa na elewa hata vile salvation yoi napatikana. So Paul needs to bring these two groups together. That is why he uses the logic and asema, you are all, that is verse 26, you are all sons of God through faith in Jesus. Okay? For all of you have been baptized into Christ, have clothed themselves with Christ. So now Paul needs to do something very important. He needs to link that concept of being sons of God through faith in Christ. And now he needs to link that to the messianic promise which was given to Abraham. That's why he states in verse 29, Akisema, if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Uh, so, wapendwa. Now, our writer now wants us following which is to say this. All Jew or Gentile who enter into un union with him are accounted as Abraham's true, true family and inheritors of the promise. So, um, I believe I have had enough to say, yeah. Word of the Lord was forever. If you look at that particular text, what you should pick is the seed. Who is this seed? Jesus Christ. Why is he referred also as the word? If you look at the book of First John, John 1.1, 1, 1, the word says, in the beginning there was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. It was made flesh. Why? He had to come and wear the human body so that it dies on our behalf so that the humankind can be reconciled. That is why the messianic promise is for salvation. Those who receive Jesus Christ, he comes into your heart. 
And once it's in your heart, it starts to transform your life, your mind, your character. And that character now comes to resemble the initial character which we are supposed to have when the first Adam sinned through disobedience. Jesus Christ has been referred somewhere in the book of Romans as the second Adam. He obeyed the obligations of the covenant by obeying. And that is why he's referred to as a seed. A seed is important when you plant it down on the ground. It, it brings more. He died so that he, more children were born. He was one, the, son, the begotten son of God. He died. That is the fact was planting. He was planted so that many sons were born. So that is how when we believe in him, we become the sons of God. The second, uh, on Tuesday, but we see the Messianic promise part two. The first part is about salvation, redemption. Jesus is now going to come a second time. The first one is when he came the first time, it was to save us from the sin where we had been sold by the devil. But now the second part, the messianic part too, is also now talking about he's going to come again. This time he's not going to come as a savior again. He's coming as a judge. Are you prepared? Have you given your heart to Christ so that when he comes a second time, you will be among those people who Paul describes in the, first, in the book of First Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18, that those who sleep in Christ, they have not died, they have slept. Are you among those people who will sleep in the road? Ama, you will be a person who has not received Christ, and then there is now a de- an eternal death. So Elder Minor will take us through the Messianic Promise Part 2 to see the second advent of Jesus Christ, who is the seed that is being referred to in this particular text. Karibu Elder. Asante sana, Malimu. Nashukuru kwa sababu tumeona sehemu ya kwanza juu ya ahadi ya masi. Na tumeona kwamba ahadi za Mungu ni za ukweli na kupitia mtumishi wake Abrahamu mtoto ameweza kuzaliwa. Bado tuliona pale kwa jina Isaac. Na kupitia kwa mtoto huyu naposoma historia napata Yesu anatokea naye amesaliwa kutoka nyumba hiyo ya Daudi. Na hivyo pasi tunaona kwamba ahadi za Bwana ni ni za ukweli na sio za uongo. Mungu sio binadamu aweze kutanganya. Kwa sababu Isaac amesaliwa kwa Abrahamu ambaye aliongocha miaka mingi. Na baadaye kupitia kwa nyumba hii ya Abrahamu naona Yesu anazaliwa na neno ambalo Paulo alikucha kusema katika 1 Corinthians 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 20 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 20 ambaye nasema for all the promises of God in him are yes and in him amen unto the glory of God by us kwamba ahadi za Bwana wetu Mungu wetu sote ni ndio na ni hakika na sitatimika na tumeona sikitimika vile Abraham alivyoweza kuahidiwa sijui ni kitu gani umeomba Mungu sana na unaongochea usipe moyo wewe amini ahadi za Bwana zinakuja na hivyo tunapata kwamba kutoka usao huo wa Abraham Bauro kupitia kitabu cha Wagaratia there is something very important nataka tuweze kusoma Galatians chapter 3 verse verse 7 verse 7 8 and then tunaruka tuende verse 14 verse 7 inasema Galatians chapter 3 verse 7 no you tell for that they which are of faith the same are the children of Abraham. Who are this? You and me. And everybody around the world. Whoever has faith. Whoever who believes in Jesus. And has accepted him. Through baptism. Na anaendrea kutunza imani. Uyu ni usao wa Abraham. Kwa hivyo kuna chambo lila watu wanasema kuhamba wewe siyo muisirairi. Wewe ujatoka, wewe ni muafirika. Ibiria nasema kila yoyota ambaye amemuamini Yesu na amengia andani ya machi mengi amebatiswa. Uyu ni usao wa Abrahamu. 
haichalisi umetoka nchi gani haijalisi umetoka taifa gani ama wewe umetoka kabila gani allow us eight inasema something very important and the scripture for seeing that god would justify the hardened true faith preached before the gospel unto haplam saying in this shall all the nations be blessed na hivyo tunaona kwamba kupitia isaac allow baadaye yesu nchi yote na dunia yote imebarikiwa na hivyo kutokea kwa kusaliwa kwa Yesu ili aweze kutuokoa kuna neno ambalo liliweza kutimika which is very important and key na tunataka tuweze kulielewa in that Galatians chapter 3 first 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 13 and 14 which is very important ambayo inasema sasa Christ had redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us for it is written cast is everyone that hanged on a tree that the blessing of haplam might come on the gentiles through jesus christ that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith na hivyo kupitia kwa miparaka ya yesu pale msalabani sasa sisi ni wana uh, uh, wa kweli wa Mungu na hivyo rahana sote Yesu alijukua msalabani rahana sa sheria rahana sa kila aina hakuna rahana Yesu alipakisa ambaye yeyote ataweza kukuambia kwamba kuna rahana kutoka pahali fulani Biblia imeweka wasi kwamba all the curses God Jesus aliweza kusiondoa pale msalabani na sasa tuko huru ila tu tusimame imara na tuwe na imani kama ile ya Abrahamu aliweza kuwa naye na hivyo pasi tunapohenda sehemu ya pili ya hadi ya masi ni kwamba sasa Yesu huyu huyu anarudi tena the same Jesus ambaye sasa alikucha akatuokoa na akatuondolea raana sote Biblia inasema kwamba anarudi tena na hivyo pasi tunaambiwa katika kile kitabu cha Revelation chapter 3 verse 12 tuweze kujiandaa uweze kujiochi unaoyaona majala ambayo tunayoyapitia uweze kujiuliza Yesu huyu akirudi leo akirudi kesho akirudi miaka kumi ijayo je utakuwa miongoni mwa wale ambao watakao moraki mawinguni na kuna kitu ambacho cha muhimu sana pale mwalimu ambaye kwa wala ambao tunaoendelea pamoja tunaambiwa chuo ya historia ama chuo ya mwandishi mmoja ambaye aliandika maneno eh, eh, katika eh, kwa miaka ambayo imepita ya elfu moja na mia sita chuo ya mambo ya leping mambo ya mauachi umeona chuo hata watu wengine wamewaua tu na hata wajulikane nani aliwaua mambo ya ufisati mambo ya wisi every kind of sin ambazo zilikuwa zaidi ya miaka 1500 iliyopita you can utaweza kuangalia zile sota ambazo aliweza kutacha na aliandika katika kitabu hicho na hivyo alipokuwa anaangalia akaweza kuwavikia kitu kimocha kwamba to enjoy true happiness we must travel into a very far country and even out of ourselves kwamba katika ulimwengu huu Yesu tulikombolewa lakini hakuna amani hakuna fulaha mpaka tuweze kufikiria chuo ya inchi mupia ambaye Yesu alienda kutuandalia na hivyo pasi katika ile inchi mupia unaposoma first Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 inasema kuna mambo yametayarishwa pale na Yesu ambaye sitaweza ama macho yako hayataweza kujatafakari ama kuyafikiria na hutaweza kuyaelewa lakini ni mambo ya masuli ya achabu kwa sababu yako na pale there is something which is very important mwalimu i want to, to read from the book of isaiah isaiah chapter 25 umechua hivi karibuni 
na miaka mingi imepita kifo kimekuwa kiki su, us, kimesumbua ulimwengu sana katika ile hinchi mpya ambaye Yesu huyu tumesema anarudi Isaiah 25 verse 8 anasema hivi He will swallow up death in victory and the Lord God will wipe away tears from half poor faces and the puke of his people shall he take away from half all the heart for the Lord had spoken it hii ni hadi ingine kwamba katika ulimwengu hule mpya kifo kitameswa mirere maombolezo hayatakuwa pale hakutakuwa na kamati ya kupanga masisi hatutafungua whatsapp ya kutafuta pesa ya kusaidiana pale ni furaha chabu ambaye itakuwa katika nchi hile ambaye Mungu ameahidi kupitia nabii wake Isaya kwamba hakutakuwa na shida yoyote lakini ni furaha tele Ombi langu tunapoendelea kusoma lesson ya leo ni kwamba sasa tuangalie sehemu hiyo ya ahadi eh, ya, the second coming of Jesus kwamba it is lili and it will come na and hivi karibuni Yesu huyu ataweza kukuja na tutaweza kumuona lililo pak kama mtumishi wa Mungu Abraham tutunse na kuilinda imani na tuamini ahadi za Mungu kwamba ni za ukweli na sitatimika na tusiyumbiswe na yale ambayo tunayohona ambayo yanayumbisa na yanatingisa ulimwengu kwa sababu shetani anajua kitu kimoja wakati wake umekwisha na anataka kukufa na mtu usiwe mmoja wa wala ambao wataweza kukufa na shetani wacha kama ni kukufa ukufe ukiwa ndani ya Yesu ili Yesu atakaporudi uweze kuwa miongoni wa wala ambao watakao kumraki mawinguni wewe pamoja na mimi asante mwalimu asante Meona ya kwamba the covenant of the Messiah is the most important promise. Kama mtu yeyote hataweza kuelewa Messiah ni nani na kazi yake alikuja kufanya ni gani because that is where life is. There is a popular text we normally prefer John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish. So there are people who are going to perish not because of sin but because they do not believe in Christ that he has died for them. There is to believe Abraham believed God and it was counted him uh, righteous. So Jesus is coming a second time. This time he will now look at those who are his. You have his sign in your heart. Because a covenant sign must be there. Those who are going to be children of God the way the title the lesson is saying uh, the children of God are the children of the promise. Their sign will be the Holy Spirit who has been sealed in our hearts. Whoever did not, does not have that sign obviously will have to perish with the devil. God continued giving more promises to Abraham and uh, the other promise we want to say is in the in, in Wednesday part where he also gave him a promise that uh, he will make Abraham a great and mighty nation so elder sego will take us through uh, why he gave this promise why a great and mighty nation and we fall anywhere in this particular plan of um, promise elder karib Asante. Ishi wetu anatuambia ya kwamba Abraham was promised by God. God promised Abraham that he would that in him all the families would be blessed and apart from that also in addition to that he said he would make him a great and mighty nation. Okay? That's Genesis chapter 18 verse 18. Let's actually get the text so that you can see exactly what God told Abraham. God, this is what God told Abraham. Uh, Abraham will surely become a great and powerful nation. The all nations of the earth will be blessed through him. Kwa hivyo wakati unasema great, great ni kitu kikuu, kitu ambacho kinapendeza, kina sura mzuri na umbo mzuri. So Israel was supposed to be God, God was supposed to make a nation that is really sura nzuri, katika tabia, katika hali zote, katika kiuchumi na hali zote ambazo ya maisha yao. The mighty nation pia ilikuwa kuu katika numbers okay it also actually had the numbers now um this is a promise that god is making to somebody hata hakuwa na mtoto mmoja wakati huo ikao kisomo wakati huo uh, nani alikuwa shazaliwa ismail lakini yule mtoto wa ahadi ambayo abraham alikuwa amengojea hakuwa amezaliwa lakini tunaona mungu because 
uh, mpango wa ukombozi ulikuwa kuu sana katika mawazo ya Mungu inabidi Mungu akuje arudie hiyo ahadi sana na ukisoma hata hiyo story mbele kidogo utaona ni wakati Mungu alipembelea Abraham wakiwa na wageni watatu na katika hiyo maongezi ambayo ilikuwa pale hata Sara mwenyewe kusikia kwamba atapata mtoto alicheka kwa sababu alisema mimi nimeweka sana na unaona Mungu hakujali sana haya maneno ya Sara he repeated the same thing to himself uh, because that is what he had purpose to do okay now um let's look at genesis chapter 46 verse 3 what 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 god said what what happened now genesis 46 verse 3 in fact in answer hivi i am your god the god of your father kwa hivyo kitu cha kwanza mungu anaji introduce upendo wakati mungu anapotaka kutuambia maneno god actually introduces himself which actually sometimes tells us that it's good manners to introduce oneself So God introduces himself. He introduces himself to Jacob. Anamwambia Jacob ya kwamba I am God, the God of your father. Mungu wa babako, Isaac pamoja na Abraham. Now, anamwambia usiogope kwenda kule Misri. He actually, you know, actually if you read kuna mali pia aliambia Jacob usiogope. So Mungu anapotaka uh, a lot of times tunaona Mungu anaanza na hiyo phrase do not be afraid. So anamwambia do not be afraid to go down to Egypt for i will make you into a great nation there why was god going to make uh, jacob into a great nation in egypt na tunaona ni ukweli maana walipoenda katika kule egypt walikuwa watu kama 75 lakini walipotoka kule egypt walikuwa watu wengi sana so in that place god actually used egypt because egypt wakati huo ulikuwa na chakula ulikuwa na mambo mengi mazuri ambayo yalikuwa yanafanya maisha ya mwanadamu yaweze kuendelea so he actually tells him i will make you into a great nation there Alafu anamwambia hivi verse 4 I will go down to Egypt with you. You know that's very important. Hakumwambia tu waenda kule Egypt. Mungu anamwambia enda kule Egypt. Wapendo tunaelewa maisha ya wana wa Israeli kule Egypt ile ilikuwa wako. Of course Jacob says hakuelewa lakini Mungu anamwambia mimi nitaenda na wewe. I will go down. I will surely I will go with you and I will surely bring you back again. And Joseph's own hand will close your eyes. So anatoa mashaka mengi kaita maisha ya Jacob anamwambia eh hata ukikufa mwenye atakuzika ni mtoto wako kwa hivyo usiogope so i will surely bring you back again kuna mali ambapo jacob aliahidi mungu ya kwamba ukinipeleka because wakati wa tumesoma hiyo story kwa verse 20, chapter 28 ya kwamba ukinirudisha nitakufanyia 1 2 3 so mungu tena ndio huyo anakuja anarudia the same promise anamwambia nitakulete tena kwa hivyo utaenda huko na utarudi ukiwa salama na mwenye atakuzika ni mtoto wako jacob nao eh, wapendo hebu tuone when god says that he is going to make a great and mighty nation hebu tuangalie kitabu cha revelation eh? chapter 6 see if actually what god is saying it is true a revelation chapter 7 from verse 9 after this i looked and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation tribe and language standing before the throne and in front of the lamb they were wearing white robes and they were holding palm branches wapendwa john aliona watu wengi sana kutoka kila kabila kila taifa eh, lugha zote na hali zote za maisha walikuwa wamesimama mbele cha uh, ile throne ya Mungu hata sio kiti cha hukumu but they were standing in front of the throne and These are the people ambayo Biblia inawaita watoto wa ahadi children of the promise the ones that Paul was telling the Galatians ya kwamba mmebatizwa katika Yesu na mmeokolewa kwa hivyo wanakuwa watoto wa ahadi so tunaona ya kwamba ile mambo ambayo Mungu aliongea akiambia Abraham I'll make it to a great and mighty nation the fulfillment we are actually seeing it in the book of revelation of all these people from all nations who are standing before the throne of God the saved and the ransomed of the earth So wapendo tunapokuja kanisa tujitie moyo na tukue na moyo ya kwamba tunapofika hapa ambapo ni, ni, ni lango la nyumba lango la binguni sisi ni, ni candidates wa kuweza wa, wa wale ambayo watasimama mbele cha ya kiti cha enzi. Now uh, our writer also wants us to understand something. Why did the Lord want to make a special nation out of Abraham's seed? Did the Lord just want another country of a certain ethnic origin? Hebu tuone malengo ya Mungu walikuwa nini? Na pia tunapoangalia hiyo tuone katika maisha yetu ikiwa sisi are we fitting that model okay let's see what the book of exodus chapter 19 verse 5 and 6 says it 
So that's verse 19 and six, 5 and 6 says this, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations will be a treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Now, uh, Mungu anasema ya kwamba, anambia wana wa Israeli. So, kitu cha kwanza ni ya kwamba hawa watu wangekuwa taifa takatifu mbele za Mungu. Na wangeashiria ile first fruits ambaye Mungu alikuwa nataka kuvuna katika uh, hii dunia yetu. Let's look at also the book of Isaiah chapter 60 what it says. Depend the book of Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1, I'll just read from verse 2. See darkness covers the earth and thick darkness is over the people. Wapendwa, darkness ama giza katika Biblia ni kukosa neno. Mana pia ukisoma Yesu waki. Kuna promises ambaye Isaiah ali, ali, alifanya na Yesu pia narudia. Kumanisha kwamba, unakumbuka actually maneno Yesu ni kwamba inchi ya Zebulun iko katika giza. Kumanisha neno alijaonekana. So hapa, inatombea kwamba darkness na kwamba inamanisha kukosa neno. Alafu nini nafanyika? But the Lord rises upon you and his glory appears to you. Kwa hivyo, ile mwanga wa, 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 wa mungu unaleta neno ambaye inaokoa wanadamu na kufanya maisha ya wanadamu yawe mazuri. Alafu number three, nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Kwa hivyo, eh, mataifa mengine yanapoona ile mwanga ambayo uko katika inchi wa Israel, itawavutia waje pale waweze na pia kwa, kwa kukuja pale ya Israel wanaweza kupata wokovu. Wapende tunashuhudia katika Biblia kuna watu walikuja pale kutembea katika nchi ya Jerusalem na walienda kama wamaokolewa kama yule Ethiopian eunuch alitoka Ethiopia ambapo palikuwa ni, ni, ni mataifa na alipofika Yerusalemu alikuja kama ameweza kupata wokovu. Na hata Yesu anashuhudia kwamba kuna ule the Empress of Ethiopia ambaye eh, alikuja pale Israeli na alipotoka hata Yesu anasema unajua Watu kama hawa watakuja kupatikana katika ufalme wa bingu. Now let's look at also the book of De- De- Deuteron- Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 6 to 8 what Moses aliweza kuandika. Now Deuteronomy 4 verse 6 to 8 which goes like this. Um, observe them carefully. Now, See, I have taught you decrees and Lord, as my Lord commanded me. Observe them carefully, for this will show your wisdom and understanding to the nations, which will, who will hear about all the decrees and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. What other nation is so great as to have their gods near them? Uh, the way of the Lord is near us. So, wapendwa, maisha ya taifa la Israel, ama wana wa Israel, ilifaa kukua, ni mwanga ambayo inchi zingine zingeweza kujua ya kwamba eh, wako na Mungu ambaye ni mkuu sana. Alafu inasema observe them carefully this will show your wisdom and understanding. Na wapendwa sisi eh, sisi tukiwa uh, wasome wa Biblia ama wa, wa Kristo. Do we have wisdom and understanding that shows other people that our God is near us? Um, and, and, and the Bible also is very good because it says that if you lack understanding, God is able to give us understanding. The book of James, I think it's chapter 2, says that if you lack understanding and wisdom, ask God na atakupa. Uh, ata kitabu cha Proverbs kinasema wisdom, iko pale sokoni. Na ukitaka wisdom, nenda pale na ukainunue and you will be a wise person. So wapendwa, in summary, is that uh, God wanted to make a great and mighty nation out of Israel for the purposes that the nations would be drawn to him. Wapendwa, God has made us into a great and mighty nation, this church, this SBA church. Are we showing that light to other people so that also they can be attracted to us? Lastly, let's look at the book of Isaiah, chapter 56, verse 7, and see what Isaiah says. And this one is a very serious thing for us Adventists because of the consequences of that. Now, 56, verse 7, in Asema Ivi. And I will bring them to my holy mountain and give them joy in my house of prayer. So Mungu anasema nitalete eh, mataifa katika uh, of course mji wake mkuu ambaye ni Yerusalem ambapo hekalu lilikuwa limejengwa wakati huo. Na nitawapa uh, furaha katika nyumba yangu ya I mean in my house of prayer, nyumba kama hii ambayo ni nyumba la Mungu ndani ya hekalu yake. 
their offerings and burnt sacrifices will be accepted so mungu atakubali zile sadaka ambazo anatoa sawa sawa na vile mungu anapokubali zile zaka na sadaka ambazo tunatoa katika nyumba yake na zitakubalika katika madhabahu yake so wapendo watu kuwe na furaha kwamba tunapoleta na zaka na sadaka katika nyumba yake mungu anayakubali na anatupa furaha katika mioyo yetu tunaenda nyumbani tukiwa na furaha for my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations Wapendo wa Mungu anasema kwamba hii nyumba yake itakuwa ni nyumba ya maombi kwa watu wote ambaye sasa sisi tukirepresent mataifa yote na lugha zote na, na, na watu wote ambao yuko katika hii dunia. Wapendo wa kuna story ambayo ilifanyika katika New Testament unaona Yesu akiingia katika hekalu na anachukua mijeledi akipiga watu. Ni kwa nini? Ni kwa sababu hao watu walikuwa nafanya biashara katika ile outer court ya ya hekalu that outer court was for the gentiles to come and worship so the gentiles could not find a place to come and worship because these israelites walikuwa nafanya biashara katika mahali ambapo you see god was saying that my house will be a house of prayer for all nations so the temple was designed in such a way that there was a place where gentiles could come and pray that's actually making it a house of prayer for all nations kuna ile sehemu ambayo ilikuwa ya wahudi peke yao ambao waliweza walikuwa na ruhusiwa kuingia kuna ile sehemu ambayo it was the outer court where the gentiles were supposed to come and pray the temple was designed like that so these israelites they, they come and do things there which they are not supposed to do na, na gentiles walikosa kupata wokovu kwa ajili ya actions yao wapenda tunajiuliza swali have we also polluted the outer court of our of our of the temple so that the people who do not know god they also find it they find it hard to know god because of our actions thank you Thank you for that contribution because our time is almost up uh, i would like to give a brief comment uh, about the new israel the older israel was supposed to showcase god to show the character of god to the world to the non jews today are we doing anything different because we are the new israel the church as an individual you are a church you are a temple of the holy spirit when people see you out there are they able to see god am they are not able to see god in you because god works through people and he uses us Now let me give you a, a, a reading that shows who you are in Christ. Second Peter first Peter chapter 2 verse 9. Who are we in Christ? You but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light who once were not a people but now the people of God who had not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy as a church as an individual you have received Christ the light is this light in us being showcased to the person who doesn't know God you don't have to go to the world to preach the world begins people who do not know God even in our families there are people who have not come to the light of Jesus Christ how is your character how is your words how are your words impacting them because it's through you that people will come to Christ or they will go away from Christ some people will say i will not go to that church because so if so and so is going there then i will not go then you are showing an example that uh, you have not received Christ so my brethren it is important that when we receive Jesus Christ that light that we have received in us let us illuminate this light to the world let us light our our lamps and put them on the table where they can be visible Our time is almost up and the lesson is so uh, huge but I will in, uh, encourage us to have time to read the word because that is where salvation is. The first part says make your name great. That is another great promise given to Abraham. That uh, make somebody's name great and famous in God's eyes. Is it the same as greatness in the world? What does the world see a person who is great? Sometimes the world sees greatness in terms of material possessions. I'm not saying that is bad, but that is the standard of the world. Maybe you are a celebrity somewhere. Maybe a politician, you have acquired huge sums of money, rightly so or through corruption. But people will look at you and say indeed you are great, your name is famous and people will stand in in, in honor of you in this world standards. But today we are going to see what does God consider greatness in terms of his kingdom? and the minor briefly kindly uh, our time is almost up give us a summary of what a great name is in the sight of god ah uh, santi uh, make you 
kwa M grade it's another promise kwa Kiswahili kulikusa jina kulikusa jina lako ukweli vile mwalimu amesema kama kuna kitu watu wanatamani ulimwengu huu ni kuwa na china hata umesikia wengine wanasema tunialibie jina na watu wanatafuta china machina makubwa makubwa na mara nyingi najua Isaia eh, yasikia hapa na pale na hata kinapoingia ndani ya Biblia kuna wengine walijitafutia lakini katika siku ya leo tunataka kuangalia ni nini Mungu anasema tu ya kuwa na ili china kubwa ama kulikusa china lako inamaanisha nini uh, there is a text ambayo tumepewa in the book of Genesis chapter 11 verse 9 tunapata kwamba baada ya the flood wana wa nu ama lile kabila la nu walipohasa tena kuchaa sana hata wao walitamani waweze kukuwa na china kubwa la hapo ulimwenguni na wakaanza kuchenga munara mkubwa wa Babel na sababu kubwa waliokuwa wanachenga yule munara unaposoma chapter 11 verse 4 of Genesis inasema and they said go to let us build as a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven and let us make us a name let us make us a name tujitengeneze china lakini tunachua kwamba mwishoe Mungu alipohona kwamba mawaso yao yalikuwa mapaya walikuwa wanataka kujukua utukufu wake kwa sababu wasema na sisi tuko na china tumechenga michi mikubwa tumefanya mambo makubwa waliweza kusambaratika lakini sisi kama wana wa teule wa Mungu Mungu hataki tuwe tuna mna hiyo pira kuwa na china anataka kwamba tuwe na china ambalo ni china nzuri ambalo ni china itachika ambalo ni china la mibaraka na ndio sababu aliambia utumisi wake Abrahamu kwamba nitalikusa china lako na ukweli tunaona kwamba aliweza kulikusa kwa sababu alikuwa ametarauliwa amechekelewa na mwishowe tunaona aliweza kumubaliki kupitia mtoto mmoja ukaweza kuwa na taiva na kupitia kwa ile taiva na sisi sote kupitia kwa kuunganika na Yesu Kristo tukaweza kuingia pale ndani na hivyo pasi ndio tunapata kwamba kukuwa na china nzuri ni kukuwa na imani na Mungu ni tofauti kabisa na machina ya ulimwengu huu ni kuwa na matendo masuli ni kumwamini Mungu aliye hai na kufuata ahadi sake na kusitunza amuli sake na ndio sababu nataka kumaliza tu just for our first na kwamba tuweze kuwa na imani na tuweze kuwa na lile na lile chambo linaloitwa a uh, fate of action that's why biblia inasema katika James chapter 2 James chapter 2 verse, verse 21 naenda haraka kwa sababu ya muda inasema kwamba was not a haplam our father justified by works then he had hovered Isaac his son upon the altar sees then how vaity lot with his works and by works was vaity made perfect kwa hivyo tunaona kwamba machina ya ulimwengu huu yataisha lakini ukiwa na china nzuri ambalo Mungu atakupea kwa sababu tuliona alimpatilisha kutoka Abraham mpaka, mpaka kaleta china raka akaitwa Abraham mpaka leo hii dunia msima zaidi ya miaka 2000 imepita inazungumzia chuo ya Abraham Abraham huyu tutamkuta mbinguni bado china lake limesimama na wewe china lako lile lililopatishwa ulilinde iweze kusimama vizuri iwe na china la mipalaka mpaka Yesu akuche na tumiona tusiwe tuna imani bila matendo. Tumiona amesema hapa kwamba Abrahamu alikuwa na imani na akaweza kumtoa mwanake wa pekee pale matabahuni kuwa sadaka. 
na sisi tuwe watu wa matendo kubebeana misigo sisi kwa sisi na hata kubebea wale wengine ambao hata sio wa hapa misigo yao kuonyesha ulimwengu imani ya Mungu huyo ambaye tunayemwabudu kwa hivyo hiyo ndio ima hiyo ndio kuwa na china e, nzuri hilo ndilo china Mungu anataka kwamba nitakutengenezea china na kwa sababu china lako litachurikana ulimwengu huu Najua wala ambao wamekuwa na machina mazuri kama yule mama Teresa alikuwa anasaidia masikini najua hata hapo ulimwenguni kuna watu wamepewa uh, sifa kwa sababu ya kusaidia na china lako likiwa mzuri hapa kwa mzuri mbinguni na mpaka itaenda kuongezewa tachi kwa sababu litakuwa ni china la miparaka asante thank you uh, we want to come to the end of our this lesson I want to thank you for your listening to us I uh, believe you have picked one or two things from this particular lesson to add to what elder said about our name greatness what, what is greatness in the eyes of god character what is your character it's not what we are seeing here what we are seeing here is your personality character is who you are when nobody is watching you are you able to do the right thing what god says in the bible unfortunately most of the humanity especially when we are carnally minded don't do the right things especially when nobody is watching us but remember god is always watching us so our character is very important faith abraham a great man of faith what is faith it's 11 it's the evidence of things not seen are you able to believe the promises god has given us more importantly today's promise about a messiah who died for you paid for your sins the only thing you do is to obey receive him your heart the rest read the word of god which is the bible and even the word himself is jesus christ so that is the one to transform obedience obedience we cannot things but sometimes we do not uh, we do not do as the word says humility meekness moses was one of those people who were very meek that serves of desires of us have have who god is Are you demonstrating your love to humanity Uh, Corinthians 13 is a chapter of love. As qualities of what love is. Love is not a feeling. It is patient. It's kind. Does not keep records of wrong. Those characteristics, we need to exhibit them as Christians. And as we have said, we are a unique generation. We have been chosen. Such that when people see you, they will want to come to God because they will want to ask just like Akina Daniel, Meshach, and Abednego. Who is this God this person is worshipping? In doing so, you are showcasing the name of God. Finally, there are many others helping the needy. Are we sensitive to the needs of others? That showcases God because God is concerned for humanity. So greatness in terms of God looks at our hearts. The condition of your heart. That is where the seed is normally planted. Jesus is the seed that is planted in your heart. And once it's found a fertile soil, it can produce fruit. A Christian is supposed to be fruitful in terms of character, in terms of production. Are you helping the needy? and are you loving god with all your heart and with all your soul uh, abraham believed god even when it was impossible to believe him imagine at age 99 getting a, a, a child the wife was 75 but he believed god he was also given a test faith always must be tested he was told to go and give the son isaac he believed god even if he killed this son he believed him that he will resurrect him that was vigorously showing that he had seen the vision of god about salvation that when god is going to give his son jesus christ he has that capacity of resurrecting jesus christ so abraham had a vision as faith in god that is why god counted him righteous in fact he became a friend of god because of his belief in the promises of god the question is today as a christian which promises have you claimed from here because we are the seed of abraham through jesus christ and these promises of god be trusted as elder mine has said in the book of first second uh, corinthians 120 it says no matter how many promises god has made they are yes in christ and so through him the amen is spoken by us to the glory of god we are assured in the scripture that god's promises will never fail whatever god says he fulfills so in summary today we have been learning about promises given to abraham but these promises by implication they are given to us through jesus christ john 3:16 for god so loved the world whoever believes in him should not perish but have an everlasting
I thank you so much for listening to us. I want to ask Elder Maina to pray for us as we finish today's lesson discussion. Uh, Santi, Napo Simama, Wachini Yapata Hombi, Nikwamba Tumeona, Sababu Iku, Yabrahamu Kuitua, and I to Toka, Pahali, Amahinchi Akwa Budu Miungu, Idi wawese kuwa mufano wa kuabudu Mungu mmoja na Mungu wa ukweli ambaye ni Mungu wa mbinguni and that is the main reason why Abraham was called to so through God and you and me we are called to wese kuonyesha Mungu wa mbinguni na vile alivyo hivyo tunapotafakali mambo hayo Mungu atusaidie atuchase na Roho Mtakatifu mpaka tena tutakapokutana mara nyingine tutakapoingia katika sehemu nyingine tuamini na tuombe mtakatifu baba na mungu wetu tunatitukusa na kulinua jina lako asante kwa sababu umekuwa nasi tulipohansa kujadiri na kujifundisha juu ya somo la leo na ukweli tumeona mkono mwako tubariki waendelee kutufundisha zaidi bali atukuweka mzuri tunaamini roho mtakatifu ataendelea kuweka vizuri na ataendelea kutufundisha kwa sababu ili ni neno lako Mapenzi yako ni kwamba tuweze kukuchua na tukuchue zaidi kwa hachili ya kutuandaa kwa kurudi kwa mara ya pili. Wacha tuweze kuwa taifa tehule vile ulivyo tuita na tuweze kuwa mfano mzuri huenda atachakuhakikisha vema hapo ule mwenguni na umeenda tumewaza wengine tunaomba uweze kutusamea na tuweze kuchua ni kwa nini ulituita na tuweze kufanya hiyo mapenzi yako. Uwe pamoja nasi sasa na hata milele katika Kristo nimeomba na hata kuamini. Amen.
na Mungu wetu ishie mahali ba enzi mbinguni jina lako litukuzwe. Asante kwa sababu ya asubuhi ya leo umekubali mkutano mkubwa namna hii. Tukiwa kule nyumbani, makazi na Bwana wale wachache ambao tuko hapa kanisani siku ya leo. Tuna wingi wa shukrani namna hii kwamba umekubali tuweze kukaa pamoja nawe. Na Bwana ukasungumuze nazi kwa njia pekee. Naombea baadhi kila mmoja anayetasama ujumbe huu kule nyumbani. Mwingine ambaye labda hako ajisikii vizuri lakini anaendelea kutasama Bwana ujumbe huu. Naomba katika hali ya kutasama iweze kuwa ni mibaraka katika maisha yake na hivyo baadhi kumpatia ubonyaji. Tubariki zote na Bwana tuweze kuishi pamoja na roho wako sasa na hata milele kupitia kwa chini Yesu Amen. Bwana napindi sana mfalme na wasalima mjambo. Ya mjambo tena kanisa. Ya asante sana ni wakati mwingine mwema. E, Mungu wetu wa rehema nyingi ameonelea vyema tena tuweze kukutana katika nyumba yake ili tuweze kuendelea kumwabudu na hata kujitayarisha kwa ajili ya kurudi kwake. Tunajua kipindi ambacho tunapitia ni kipindi kigumu sana. Lakini tuamshukuru Mungu kwa sababu amekuwa mwema kwa kila mmoja wetu na familia zetu kwa kuendelea kutulinda, kwa kuendelea kutuonekania hata kutukinga pamoja na ili changa ambalo limekumba ulimwengu wote. Na si kama Wakristo pamoja na wananchi ambao wanatii sheria ikiwa pamoja na sheria ya afya tuendelee Usingatia yale ambao maagizo tunapewa kwa sababu mnaona yale ambao yanaendelea yana katika ulimwengu mnaona mnapoangalia katika inji kama ya India mnaona ni kama ni movie sasa singine unaona ni kama ni video tu unaangalia lakini sio binadamu ambao wanapitia yale ambao tunaona kwa hivyo tunapomtazamia Mungu wetu tuwashukuru kwa sababu tunajua Mungu babu anatembea pamoja nazi Metupea nafasi nyingine tena ili kuja miguuni pake na kuendelea kumtukusa kwa sababu ametupea sauti, ametupea afya na pia anaendelea kutulinda. Na wakati huu e, nashukuru wale ambao wamekuwa wakiendeleza vipindi zingine tangu asubuhi ikiwa pamoja na Elder Jared e, Masongo ambaye alikuwa morning glory. Ukikuja wale ambao wametoka wakati huu E, wa lesson discussion pamoja na choristers wetu pia tuendelea kushukuru kwa sababu wametushikilia tangu asubuhi wakati huu e, ningependa kualika tena kwa program ambayo iko mbele yetu na pia wale ambao ni wakati wao wamekaa nje kwa muda ila kuja kanisani wale ambao wanatutasama kutoka nyumbani ya wote tuwakaribisha katika hii programu ambayo inafuata. Najua kuna wengi ambao wamekuwa nje. E, pia tunawakaribisha wale ambao mko nyumbani, wale ambao wanatutasama e, kupitia e, kwa mtandao, pia tuwakaribisha sana kwa maombi ambayo yanaendelea pamoja na programu ambayo inafuata ya maupiri. Pia familia ya Mr. and Mrs. Sisani, eh, karibu sana, kwa mekua inje kwa muda, eh, asanti sana kwa kupata nafasi, 
kuingia baada ya harusi ambayo ilifana sana. Kwa hivyo mahali mlipo mnaweza simama so that you wave to the church family ya Mr. and Mrs. Sunny. Many ya yeah, wave to the church. Ya yeah, karibu sana, karibu sana. Asante sana Mungu amekuwa mwema kwa safari ambayo mmepita. Sasa mmekamilisha yale tunaendelea kuwaombea ili Mungu ashikirie familia yenu. Na wakati huu naomba uweze kuangalia katika eh, Kifas Kifas bayo inatoka kitabu cha kitabu cha John Angalia katika kitabu cha John John 7 John 7 plus 1 John gospel ya yeah, John 7 plus 1 Na kama tumefika hapo Nasema, after this, Jesus traveled in Galilee. He did not want to travel in Judea because the Jewish authorities there wanted to kill him. After this, Jesus traveled in Galilee. He did not want to travel in Judea because the Jewish authorities they wanted to kill him. Kwa Kiswahili inasema baada ya hayo Yesu alikuwa akitembea huko Galilaya hakutaka kutembea mkoani Judea kwa sababu viongozi wa Wayahudi walikuwa wanataka kumuua. Ah uh, pasta atakapokuwa anasimama kutoa neno alivavanua eh hilo fazi ili tuweze kulielewa zaidi wakati huu napenda tusimame na nyimbo zetu ah uh, 14 Boris Tusimame tafadhali number 14 
Tuombe vile tulivyo Baba wetu na Mungu wetu Mfarme uliyeishi unayeishi na utakayeishi baba ni kibindi kingine baba tumenyenyekea tena miguuni bako tukiendelea baba ku receive na kulitukuza jina lako Mungu tunajua umbali ambao umetutoa najua Mungu baba ni kwa sababu ya nhema unakubali tuendelee kuitanishwa na jina lako wakati mwingine baba atustahili lakini kwa sababu Kristo alikufa msarabani akabeba dhambi zetu na Mungu baba ukaendelea unaendelea kutukubali tuitwe watoto wako Asante wakati huu baba tunapoenda kusikia mtumishi wako napoenda kuleta neno baba kwa niaba ya mbingu Kristo fungua masikio yetu ya ndani ili Mungu baba we, ili neno liweze kutuandaa kwa ajili ya kurudi kwako Wana wako Mungu baba wameangaika katika ulimwengu wa sasa naona yale ambao Mungu baba yanaendelea kutusukuma janga moto katika hali katika aina zote lakini Kristo Tuendelea baba kukutasamia kwa sababu tunajua nyakati ambazo tunatembea ni nyakati za mwisho ambazo Mungu zinahitaji ufumilivu na hata kuendelea baba kukutasamia ili baba tukubali yale ambayo tunayoyahubiriwa tuchiandae kwa hajiri ya kurudi kwako na wakati huu Mungu baba napoenda baba kwa hajiri ya pia matoleo Kristo kila mmoja wetu na pamoja na wale ambao wako nyumbani tuandae vilivyo Kristo kwa sababu ndiyo njia moja ya maupili. Wana wako wengine ambao Mungu wanapitia kipindi kigumu, wengine wamepoteza wabensi wao, wengine wako mahospitali, wengine wako na shida ya kifamilia, wengine Mungu wanaangaishwa na maisha katika upande zote, lakini Kristo tunajua kwamba unaendelea kusikia sauti ya kila mmoja wetu na hata faraja za mbingu zitaendelea kuwatosha wale ambao Mungu Baba wame wapenzi wao wamerara. Na Mungu jina lako liendelee kuinuliwa na kuinuliwa. wakati huu Kristo waomba ukatusamee bari baba pamoja na udaivu wetu na hata Mungu baba uendelee kutuandaa kwa ajili ya kurudi kwako jina lako litukuswe sasa na hata mirere na ni katika jina la savi la Yesu tumeomba na kuamini amen Shamba ya ja telena fakapevu popote anga meupebo deni nanya dani mwenye ma. Zao ha takazi ya ishe wa peleke u chaoni wa ende na jotoni ha.